Now here's the question of, okay, that's all fine and dandy. Those are the principles of virtualization. You know, you have isolation and some flexibility in your backups and all of that. Yeah. But then, okay, how does it work? Like, how do you actually virtualize something? Well, fundamentally, it's a piece of software. It's like you have your host and you are, so you have your operating system, right? Your operating system is running on a physical machine, right? A physical machine, which has a CPU, a motherboard, GPU, some RAM, an NIC, which stands for Net Network Interface Card. So it's like okay. your Ethernet port, essentially. Oh. So those are resor physical resources on your host. What your operat operating system does normally is just like communicate with each of these components. Yeah. Right. What we do when we do virtualization is we say, okay, I would like this virtualization software or container software. So I it could be Docker, could be uh, Proxmox, could be VMware, VMware Workstation, VMware Player. You tell the hypervisor, okay, please create a, v a, a virtual. First of all, you need to create the virtual physical machine, the virtual hardware. So that virtual hardware is also going to have its own virtual CPU, virtual motherboard, virtual RAM, and so on. Okay. And in fact, what's really cool about it is that, for instance, in the case of network interface card, you can give it more network interface cards, virtual network interface cards, than you have physical network interface cards. Oh. Yeah, we'll get into that, but it's really cool. That's where it gets really, really fun. And we will do some of that um, later for our labs. So you need to give it, so first you need to create the virtual uh, hardware, and then you can tell the, the, virtualize, the virtualization, the hypervisor, now install an operating system on that, right? Yeah. First create the virtual hardware, then install an operating system on it. So what I want to focus on now is actually that virtual hardware. There is, it, it, so it is an entire, a real huge rabbit hole that I'm not going to fall into. I'll just go over some of the most important components of virtualization hardware. So the, a, a big thing is actually the amount of CPU cores you have. So for performance reasons, you want you want like you want your virtualized hardware you want your virtual your virtual cpu to be as closely tied to the physical cpu as possible okay in fact there is a technology that's called i mean the the general term for it is pass through this is not quite what we're doing here but it's close enough it's a good analogy where you're saying, for instance, GPU pass-through is very common, uh, especially for like gaming VMs, where you'd say, hey, take my GPU and don't use it on the host at all. Like literally don't use it on the host at all. Just give it to the virtual machine and only the virtual machine can actually use it. Okay. Typically, that's what you can, you can try doing that if you want to run a Windows virtual machine. This technique is called pass-through. It's obviously, it's a whole rabbit hole. Uh, there's, you, you have very specific sort of hardware requirements to do it. So I would only recommend doing it if you really know what you're doing. It, it's, it's not trivial. GPU pass-through specifically. In, in the case of CPU, we don't need to do f in, like complete pass-through. We can do something that's slightly more simple, but so for CPU, there is another technology that is not quite as good as pass through, but is still very, very, very good. And you enable that in the BIOS settings, 
and it's so often it's called CPU virtualization. Virtualization. And this is an option you enable in your BIOS. So you need to enable it. And what this does is it says, okay, like it essentially, so I don't know precisely what it does from a technical perspective. What I do know is that it allows the virtual CPU to, to communicate more directly with your physical CPU and improving performance. Okay. So you want to, so, okay. You want a direct line essentially between your virtual CPU and your physical CPU. Essentially. Yeah. yeah. When we configure our virtual CPU, we can give it a number of cores. We can say one core, two, four, eight, and so on. In fact, yeah. these, if we have, uh, CPU virtualization enabled. Yeah. Those cores will actually correlate to cores on our physical machine. So for instance, okay. if I say, hey, I want this to have four cores. In fact, it will correlate to four logical cores. So that means four threads on my yeah. physical CPU. So two physical cores. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So what you have right now at your disposal is a machine that has 12 different threads, meaning if you were to run virtualization and you want somewhat decent performance, you could run up to 12 separate CPU cores. So if you want, let's say, let's say you want like just one CPU core per VM, which yeah. arguably is fine because we're going to be running rather weak. I want to say weak VMs, like not very uh, CPU intensive. If you just want to run one CPU core per VM, you're actually going to be able to run 12 of them. Okay. In practice, you can run more because just be it's like, because it's not pass through, right? Pass through means the VM has exclusive access to the CPU core. Yeah. Whereas if you have CPU virtualization, it just means, Hey, please copy the configuration of my CPU for better performance. It's yeah. not a, essentially we want CPU virtualization and the a good rule of thumb is that you don't want to exceed like if you run 12 VMs with one core, you're very, very tight, right? You definitely yeah. don't, you want to avoid exceeding that. Definitely. Okay. It's not that it won't work. It's just that you, the more you, the more you're going to be using those VMs and the more you're going to run into performance issues. Okay. Like serious, because essentially they're going to be stepping on each other's toes. Yeah. Okay. So now that we know that it means that for you watching at home, uh, if you're interested in virtualization and then you are wondering what can you or what can your physical machine run, the main thing that you want to look at is the number of cores. Uh, Yes, the clock speed will matter in the sense that the more clock speed you have and like it will increase not only the performance of each individual VM, but also technically it might increase the amount of VMs you can run. But in practice, you don't want to exceed, like a good rule of thumb is not to exceed the amount of threads you have available. And again, if you want to see how many threads you have, you go in the task manager, right? So this is the task manager. Go in performance. Check your CPU after you after clicking, you know, logical processors for the graphs, and you can tell how many logical processors you have. You don't want to exceed that number. So I have a very good CPU. I have 24 logical processors. I could easily run 24 separate VMs. Yeah. Okay. How to make a virtual girlfriend. I don't know. Ask Elon. So now I think we can actually get to it now with that we understand this also. Yeah, no, hold on. Before we do that, I also want to mention one more thing regarding virtualization. I mentioned something that got you a little excited 
that you can run you can run VMs that have more NICs than you have physical NICs, yeah. physical interfaces. So the idea is this. You have your, phys and this is what I do personally with my home server. You have your physical machine, you're running a virtualization software, running Linux. So like this is a hypervisor, Proxmox, for instance, the one that I mentioned earlier. You're running separate virtual machines, right? So first you have the virtual hardware and then you have the virtual software and then you have the operating systems uh, inside. But what I care more about, hold on, I'll just close the window real quick. What you can do is say, okay, I want a network architecture where like, these two PCs are connected to, like all PCs are connected to this one. And this one is actually connected to the physical, physical network interface card I have on my physical PC. Right? Yeah. So suddenly, well, this PC, this, this VM here has like four, four network interfaces, right? Yeah. Even though it's only using one, but that's because you're now virtualizing an entire network. And that's what we're going to do when we do the, the VPN lab. We're going to okay. be virtualizing that, right? We're going to be, we're going to have, essentially what we're going to have when we do the, the VPN lab is we will have, we will have three computers, three operating systems. Uh, we, and they'll be connected like this. Right, where we have, this will be our PF sets. This is our firewall. This will be win our Windows machine. And this will be a, our Linux machine. Okay. 